So this is the third video in this four-part series where I spend 25 years building up this zoo, all leading to having a 100-year zoo. And let me just say, it was also the most challenging. It's also very delayed. I actually started working on it a couple days after I posted the 50-year video, but Planet Zoo servers kept crashing, and when that happened, it would lag my OBS and mess up my recordings. So I held off on recording while the issue was being solved, so sorry for the delay. There won't be that long of a wait between this one and the fourth and final one though, I promise. Also, I did pick up some of the DLCs while they were on sale over the holidays. I got the Australian pack, the aquatic pack, the conservation pack, and the twilight pack. There really wasn't any rhyme or reason to how I picked them, I just chose the ones I thought looked neat. But with all that said, let's get into it. We're gonna start with the fact that I forgot to mention that I now have leucistic Bengal tigers in my zoo, which is quite neat. I also spent some time renovating the camel habitat, because while checking out the new DLC animals, I had noticed that this horse was compatible with the bacterian camels. I know it's not just called horse, by the way, there's definitely a word in front of that, but I'm, I'm not trying to pronounce that word. That's just not happening. And since the camel habitat was way too big anyway, I decided to throw a herd of them in there to fill up the space a little more which meant making them a shelter and tweaking the train a little bit. And honestly, I don't want to dwell on these guys for too long because they don't stick around. And uh, no, I won't elaborate on that quite just yet, quite yet. But either way, I finished the habitat renovations and moved on to adding the next animal to the zoo, which just so happens to be one of my favorite animals, the okapi. And unfortunately, I don't have the footage of making the barrier, adding the water, or making the shelter because my game crashed and I unfortunately lost it. But the only real thing of note is that this is a walkthrough habitat, and because of that, I went ahead and made this shelter with one-way glass along the front. I fixed the train to their liking before pulling out some trees that I lined the back of the habitat with, making sure to cover the staff path with leaves because it amuses me to make the staff walk through it to get to the habitat. And I was really happy with how it was looking, but it got a hundred times better after I found this giant rhubarb plant. Just look at this thing. It's so big and fluffy and cool looking and it takes up just enough space to hide all the unsightly spots in a habitat. Honestly, this plant alone was worth buying the DLCs for. Also, I crashed again. And when I hopped back on to finish the habitat by adding the education speakers and donation bins, I played for all of a minute before I once again crashed. And this is where I decided to, uh, to wait for the Planet Zoo server issue to be sorted before continuing the recording. After which, I picked up where I had left off and added the education speakers and donation bins to the habitat. I also realized that I hadn't added any rocks yet to this habitat, and so for the finishing touches I added a few clusters around. But with that sorted, this habitat was finished. I spent some time before starting the next habitat collecting matured animals and moving stressed out flamingos to this really specific spot so that their stress would go down. Also, this is where the issues with the horses started. Also, also, I remembered choosing this location for the zoo because it didn't rain here, or at least I thought it didn't. But it rains like two more times after this and then doesn't happen again. I'm not really sure why that happened, but unexpected rain aside, one of the horses had a baby which I thought was ridiculously cute. I waited for the rain to stop and got to making the path that will lead to the next habitat, which is going to be for the gharial. I set up a null barrier to mark out how I wanted the habitat to look, and after I got something I liked the look of, I added the gharial in. I made the back and side walls of the habitat out of rock before starting to sculpt out the swimming area. And I really didn't like the look of my first attempt, so I went back in with the rough and train tool. And I wasn't entirely happy with how it looked, but I was happy enough to move on to the next step, which was to place a fence barrier along the front of the habitat. And with the fence in place, I went back with more rocks to finish the barrier. I also messed around with the water quite a bit more until I got something I was actually happy with, which took a hot minute, but eventually I got a result I deemed satisfactory and moved on to adding moss rocks along the barrier for some variation in color. Not that it really mattered, because after that was done, I covered most of it with trees anyway. I think the few mossy rocks that you can see poking through added a nice touch, though. And then I moved on to arguably the most important part of this habitat, the water. It takes up such a large chunk of the enclosure that I wanted it to look nice and be full of greenery. So I started with adding blue lotus plants before moving on to adding the underwater plants, along with a sparse amount of cattail and common reeds to make the outer edge of the water look more busy. I also decided that I had been too sparse with the blue lotus plants, and so I added a fair few more, along with some common water lilies to add more variation, after which I added the enrichment items and fixed the terrain, added some rocks, threw down the education speakers and donation bins, and this habitat was done. I then let the game run for about three years, 
Also, this was really the only way for me to let time pass in this game. My zoo has outgrown my computer's capabilities by just a little bit, and so if I open tabs and build stuff while the game is unpaused, I lag. The lag isn't too bad, but it wouldn't make for very good footage, so I spend a chunk of time in between building to maintain the zoo. Not to mention the constant notifications going on in the top left. None of it's particularly interesting though, so I probably won't mention too much of the in-between unless something interesting actually happens. Like how the Okapis had a really cute but really angry baby. Also, I placed more feeding stations and removed some of the feeding enrichment items in the camel habitat. Because I remembered when I was having issues with the flamingos and peafowls being hungry despite just being fed that that had helped quite a bit. Also, one of the Siberian tigers passed away, and I'm only mentioning it because it was specifically a Siberian tiger that passed. And when I went to put another tiger in there, I accidentally added a Bengal tiger instead of a Siberian tiger, and I completely missed my mistake and instead moved on to adding the next shopping area. And just as I was finishing it up, I got the notification that she had arrived at the zoo. And after I added all the stuff in the area to the proper work zone, I zoomed out to see how the larger zoo was looking, and I got the notification that Brody had died. And I was so disappointed, because up until this point, I had never had an animal die from anything other than old age. But the show must go on, and I needed to pick me up, so I decided to work on the next habitat, which was going to be for the giant pandas. And it was going to slot in neatly next to the new shopping area. So I set up a wooden barrier with glass for the viewing areas and added the pandas. After which, I gave them a water area and added some climbing structures to the habitat, which also doubled as their shelter. I placed their feeding platforms on top of the climbing structures because I've never done that before and I thought it would be cute. After which, I added the bedding and the rest of the enrichment items, before pulling up the nature tab and giving them some cherry blossoms and Himalayan birch trees, along with covering the back of the habitat with bamboo and adding a healthy amount of rocks, before going through and adding a variety of plants and finishing it off with fixing the train. And that was this habitat finished. I didn't get to enjoy it for too long though because I got a notification for an escaped animal. And this little fiend was the culprit. He doesn't look very escaped. But technically, because I didn't make sure the null barrier was behind the fence, he had crossed the imaginary barrier. So I fixed that really quick and was able to go back to the pandas. Also, I forgot to add education speakers and donation bins for quite a while, but I did remember eventually. I also had to add coolers to the habitat because the pandas were not happy with the temperature. But after that, the habitat was actually finished. And while I was recording the pandas eating, I got another escape notification. I wasn't quite sure which of the four pandas escaped, because they all looked rather confined to the habitat as far as I could tell. But upon closer inspection, this dude was definitely outside of the habitat. Yeah, not really, that's a joke. He was definitely not outside of the habitat. He's very much so in the habitat. And so I went back to watching the pandas eating, and it stopped telling me he escaped after a second. And despite being a little bitter that the people who ran were going to want refunds, watching the pandas eat made it just a little better. Until I had another glass phasing escape. Luckily enough though, no one seemed overly concerned with this little guy running around. He did eventually get caught though and he dropped like a lead balloon. There were also still issues with the camel habitat and so I went back through and deleted some more of the enrichment items to try and solve the issue. After which I went to check on one of the Siberian tigers because they had poor welfare, which was due to a lack of hydration. I moved her along the water edge a couple times and she eventually drank some water. I'm not really sure why she was being so picky about the spot she would drink from, but no harm no foul I guess. It wasn't long before I found myself back at the camel habitat once again with some very hungry horses. And I'm pretty sure the issue I was having with these guys was due to lack. Because if you'll notice, the keeper is cleaning the habitat, which in my experience they only do after feeding the animals. So either this guy didn't go and eat or the game just isn't registering that they were fed. I'm not sure what the issue was really, I really should have just removed them at this point, but alas, I didn't. And so we move on to the next habitat, which is for the red deer. Not really an animal I'd walk by in a zoo and be blown away to see, but deer are cute and so I'm adding them. Starting with making the path to where this habitat will be, I made them a pretty simple wood with glass at the front barrier and then set up the staff building for a new work zone nearby. And then I had all the deer brought to the habitat where I set up the enrichment items and added the water, after which I gave them a shelter using the barrier walls. I started with adding a few trees before placing some cattail reeds around the water, and a lot of common grape vines along the inside of the barrier, finishing off the greenery with placing down a fair few flowers and bushes. And the train was very simple because these guys were more than happy with a habitat full of just grass. 
I added the education speakers and donation bins along with some rocks, and this habitat was done. Uh, but on a sad note, two of the horses in the camel habitat died of starvation as they were being fed, which is a little ironic. And maybe I'm huffing copium a little bit, but, but, the tiger dying was totally my fault. These guys dying? Not my fault. I'm not taking responsibility for these ones. It was lag that killed them, and that is my final statement on the matter. No, but all jokes aside though, I was so disappointed to have another animal die from a way that wasn't just old age. And I'm actually not sure why it happened, or how it could have been prevented. But either way, I moved on, and so did King. But at least he died of old age. I set up a memorial plaque on the barrier, which I haven't really been keeping up with doing for all the other animals, but since I actually named him, I figured I would hang up the plaque. And after all that was done, I wanted to move on to the next habitat. First though, I wanted to set up this ride. And no joke, it took me at least 30 minutes to get this thing working. This was my first time adding one of these rides to a zoo and it fried my brain for some reason. But overall, it was a nice addition to this segment of the zoo. My plan was to make the hippopotamus habitat next, but when I went to the market to get some, they were in rather short supply. So instead I started working on the Indian elephant habitat. I started with making a barrier out of brick and putting thick glass where I wanted the viewing areas to be. After which I set up the water area and had the elephants brought to the habitat. And for the briefest of seconds, I considered not using the cherry blossom trees, but then I came to my senses and scattered a few of them around. I did want green in my greenery though, so after a second of poking around through all my options, I found this fig tree that I really liked the look of. It was the perfect color of green to pair with the pink cherry blossoms. I sprinkled around some other smaller plants before switching my focus to the water because it was looking rather plain. I started with adding rocks in and around the water before pulling out the greenery again and adding in whatever I felt made the area look more lively, finishing it off with adding rocks along the edge where the water meets the barrier. And now that the water was done, it was time to finish the rest of the habitat. I started with adding all the enrichment items and making them a shelter, after which I worked on the terrain, added more rocks, and finished it off with placing down the education speakers and donation bins. While I was letting the game run, I got another notification for the tigers being dehydrated, and so I went ahead and placed a water pipe into their habitat, which thankfully worked to solve the issue, and I didn't have any other issues with the tigers after this. I also had to refill the lion habitat after all of them had passed away. Also, after the panda's like third attempt, they were finally going to have a baby. I had a brief debacle with the elephants trying to escape that I resolved by changing the thick glass to brick with glass instead. Or at least I thought I had solved it. And it wasn't until a short while later that another wall got broken down and I realized that I didn't need to change it, I just needed to increase the height. Also, the baby panda was born and I was rather amused by how chunky his little face was. But with all that said and done, it was time for the next habitat, which was actually an animal that I didn't plan on adding to this zoo, but someone commented in the last video and I agreed that it was only right that I add Nile monitors to this zoo. Before I could do that though, I needed to take a trip back to the first zoo and say hello to Bert, before going over to the baby overflow area and picking up two of her children. I did think about maybe taking Bert to the new zoo, but I decided against it because she would for sure pass away before I finished it. And to be honest, I don't want to see that happen. So instead, we're relocating two of her children to carry on her name. But after I was done with that, I made my way back to the zoo that I'm currently working on and started working on the area for the Nile monitors. Starting with the null barrier before pulling out the fence that I used to make the Nile monitor habitat in my first zoo. And after a short while, the fence was for the most part finished, excluding this small hole in this side that's going to get covered with a bush or something. After the barrier was set up, I bought another Nile monitor but I didn't have them brought to the habitat just yet because Bert's babies still had two years before they were matured and I didn't want him just sitting there aging. I did have the other two brought to the habitat though and was rather amused with watching them scuttle around in the long grass. I started with making the watering area and setting up all the enrichment before adding some trees to the habitat and some blue lotus plants to the water. I threw around a sparse amount of bushes along with some ferns and leaf litter before adding more greenery in and around the water area and fixing the terrain, along with making the path along the back of the habitat staff only so that the guests would stay at the front where the good viewing spots were. I also added the education speakers and donation bins before I could forget, and with all that in place, it was rock time. And there were a lot of rocks to add, mostly focused around the water, but after I was done with the rocks, this habitat was finished. It was a little funny to watch these two small lizards have so much room to roam, but it also made me happy because I just think these stupid lizards are rather neat. This habitat was done though, and it was time for some more in-between habitat building zoo maintenance, which in this case entailed restocking the reptile house, 
Oh, and I also realized that the mechanic research tab had new things from the DLCs that I didn't have going, so I started those. And I also went ahead and added the last Nile monitor to the habitat. Also, since the left side of the zoo was finished, I decorated it with some trees to finish it up a little bit more. And with all that done, it was time to start the next habitat, which was meant to go behind the red deer habitat. But I think I built the ride track too low because I couldn't place a path underneath it. And so instead, I made the hippopotamus habitat next to the Indian elephant habitat. And I was a little stumped as to how I wanted to make this habitat. But in the end, I decided to sink the terrain a little bit and use a null barrier. I added the water and then had the hippos brought to the habitat. After which I set my sights on figuring out the barrier situation. My initial thought was to use rocks to line the edge and act as the barrier. And I tried a couple different iterations of that and didn't really like any of them. So instead I used the steel mesh barrier for the habitat. I didn't think it was the best looking option, but it worked. Also while I was working on that, the first Nile monitor babies were born, which I thought was pretty exciting. But back to the hippos. I went about making them a shelter and placing all their enrichment down before getting out the trees and adding a healthy amount, mostly around the back of the habitat. I threw common reeds along the edge of the water and added various other bushes and flowers to the habitat before pulling out the rocks. And at first I added rocks into the water to make it look less plain, but it took away a lot of the traversable area and so I took them all out. And now these guys live with some very plain looking water, but that didn't stop me from putting rocks everywhere else, even if it was just a touch sad to see such rockless water. But a couple education speakers and donation bins later and this habitat was done. And when I zoomed out to look at the zoo in its entirety, I was rather pleased with how it was shaping up. Also, while I was looking to see what the money flow for the zoo was looking like, I made a startling discovery. But I had plenty of animals in my animal storage that I just hadn't cleared out yet, and so I did just that and earned myself a chunk of money. So I really wasn't all that worried about it. I'll tell you what really wasn't helping the money issue, though. Animals that are very much so not escaped, escaping. According to the game, at least. I don't know what it is about this specific spot in the panda's habitat that does this, but it is very inconvenient. Especially when all the guests that run are going to one refunds. That aside though, the Nile monitors had more babies. And because the Nile monitors are the least problematic animal in the zoo, they are also now my favorite. And the snow leopards are now my least favorite. Even though he did do me the favor of turning around and phasing back into the habitat. All that aside though, it's time for another habitat. Which is going to be for timber wolves. And when I was buying them, I got really confused because some of them were a different color, but it wouldn't tell me what the coat color was. And so out of curiosity, I bought the cheapest one. I set up a basic wood barrier with glass and had the wolves brought to the habitat. And I was waiting for the wolf with the odd coat color to be brought to the habitat because I was almost positive it was going to be just the same as the rest. And that my game was just being funky. But she actually did have a different fur color. I don't know why it blanked out the coat color in the marketplace, but either way, she was rather neat looking. I made the shelter for this habitat, after which I gave them bedding and their enrichment items, added a water source, and moved on to the greenery. I kept the trees to the back of the habitat and changed the terrain to snow. These guys also howled really loud right into my ears. Rest in peace to my fellow headphone users. That's a joke, I'm gonna turn down the volume so you don't have to suffer like I did. I added some coolers to this habitat because the snow terrain just looks like rock if it's too warm and I wanted at least most of it to look like snow. With all that done though, I pulled the plants back out and threw down some bushes and a fair few flowers to add some color to the habitat. I added rocks in and around the water and scattered some in the greenery, but overall not too many because I didn't want to take up too much of the traversable area with rocks. I also realized that despite having added quite a few new animals, I hadn't been prompted to raise the zoo costs at all so far. Which I thought was weird because typically with every new habitat the zoo appeal goes up and you can charge more without guests being upset. But that hadn't happened, and so I raised the price as much as I could without guests being too prickly about it. Also, I did remember, eventually, to add education speakers and donation bins to the Timberwolves. After which I was ready to make the last habitat for this video. And then my game lagged, which lagged my OBS, and the footage of making the barrier was lost. Fortunately enough though, making the barrier is not the most riveting thing to watch, so no harm no foul. Also, this habitat is for mandrills. It's a monkey. Typically not my favorite thing to build for. But when I was mapping out this zoo, I thought there at least needed to be one monkey or ape, and this was my pick. I added water to the front and made them a shelter, after which I placed down all their enrichment items, including climbing stuff. And this is where I would say that I pulled out the plants to add the greenery, if I had the footage. But my stuff lagged again, and I didn't notice until I was almost done with the greenery. Which was a little bit of a shame, but I wasn't done quite yet. 
There was still some decorating to do, and so I pulled out some bushes to cover the blank edge of the habitat before sinking some bushes into the rocks lining the front because I thought it added a nice look. There was also still plenty of rocks to place, so I copied a cluster and got to it. And when that was done, I fixed the train and that was it for this habitat. I do remember to add education speakers and donation bins at some point, by the way. Just not now. First, I worked on adding vending machines, benches, trash cans, and education boards along the paths I've added. And then I remembered to add the speakers and bins. Also, as time passed, the money thing was still a persistent issue, which I was mitigating by selling the animals that I could, but I needed a more reliable fix, and so I took to firing some of the staff that had low workloads. And I pretty much spent the rest of this 75 years trying to solve or at least slow down this issue. The second thing I tried after firing staff was to add a souvenir shop in another zoo entrance, where I thought there could be more foot traffic. I did make sure to fill the souvenir shop, by the way. I also turned contraceptives off for any of the animals that still had it on, which will do one of two things. One, it's going to cost me more money. Or two, I'll make more money by having more animals to sell. I didn't really wait to see if that actually worked before moving on to another solution. I tried raising the price of most shops by 50 cents. And it's worth mentioning, I think what caused this issue is that I trained all my staff to five stars. And you might think the easy solution would be to solve the root cause of my problem, and that I should just rework my staff so that they're not all five-star employees so they don't want to be paid as much. And to you, I would say, think less, like me. Because instead of doing that, I simply fired more of them, which didn't help, before ultimately just lowering the difficulty of my game to easy mode. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I really didn't want to change my game mode, but then one of the lions must have picked up on the snow leopard's glass phasing talent, and there were so many people running, and each of them was going to want a refund. I even changed it to medium difficulty before just biting the bullet and setting it to easy. And even on easy difficulty, the issue wasn't completely fixed, but it was fixed enough. And not long after, the end of year 75 came around, which marks the end of this 25 year segment. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy watching, Maybe consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.